my water. <laughs> yes. So Mary, the, everything at the park is open, right? Uh, yes, uh, for individual use. So, um, and Nikki's gonna go over our phase plan, but basically sports fields aren't supposed to be used. I don't have audio, Mary. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Thumbs up. If you could, thumbs up, yeah. Uh I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah, Jason was there. Now he's gone. I don't know what happened to him. He might be having some internet issues. But yeah, all the fields, are, I mean, everything's open. The restrooms are open. People can use the playgrounds, um, the spaces and trails, shelters. Um, however, um, the ball fields are not supposed to be open, but, you know, we'll uh, buy in the like they playing, playing games. There, they were playing there last weekend. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I want a magic button to push the sprinklers on because they, they're not. <laughs> to use they have not been authorized to use they haven't reserved it they just show up with umpires and uniforms yeah. and everything. it's yeah. like very bold oh jason's back hmm. um oh there it goes so Jason, you're muted, but we could hear you for a few minutes before. Yeah, no, and that's, I had I had everything and it was working fine. And then all of a sudden the audio, I couldn't hear anybody. I could see everyone talking, but it's all back now. So I think I'm good. Oh, good. Yeah, you look like you up for a second too. So maybe you had an internet issue or something. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've got a quorum. Do we want to call the meeting to order? 5.30. I'll let uh, Nikki take the roll call. I'll let Nikki take roll call and she can just mark that up and, and show that we've got a quorum. Uh, uh, then I would entertain a motion. Uh, oh, go ahead, Mary. Oh, there she is. Okay, Nikki, are you there? You are going to take roll and note who is here. We have uh, Michael Lackady, Alan Billingsley, here, uh, Vito, I don't see Vito, but I see that he's on, uh, Susan Dillinger, and Linda Farmer here is our liaison. Hi, Linda. Hello. Uh, I don't see anyone else unless I'm not, I think that's everybody. So you have a quorum. Awesome. Then I would, uh, if everyone had a chance to review the April, or the May minutes, uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve those. To be honest with you, I, you know, those were sent as an attachment on the first email about this meeting. And I don't know why, but any attachment that I get from Nikki or from anybody over there it seems like i can't download it comes up it says error hmm. i don't know if it's a different system or I, I have no idea but anyway i didn't get a chance to look at them so i'm not going to make a motion to approve well i looked at them even though i wasn't there and i'll move we approve them they must be perfect <laughs> if nikki did them yeah <laughs> yeah Alan. i will i will make the second on that any other discussion Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Hearing none, unanimous approval. Thank you. And so uh, no public that I know of for public comment, is that correct, Mary? Uh, unless we receive something by written email. Um, Nikki, did you receive anything from anyone regarding public comment? No written public and comment. Connie's, and Connie's left the room. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, our other public <laughs> left the room. Okay. All right. Public comment. Okay. So then we'll roll on, on to old business and uh, do a recap of the joint council meeting, which I thought was pretty well. Um, a little disjointed because it was a Zoom meeting and went a little quicker, but uh, overall, I, I think they heard us and uh, 
feel, I know I feel supported really from them. Any other feedback from park board members? Sound like it went well with me. The one thing that I noted was that um, I think, I don't know if it was Vito or you, you were asking some questions and then you jumped into the next question. You, we, I don't know if we necessarily got answers or had council have a chance to have the conversation. So um, they, we did cover several mm -hmm. topics, but that was just one thing that I, and I think that was part of the Zoom and switching from person to person and, um, and a little bit of a delay. So that was, that was the only thing that I sort of noticed a little bit. Yeah, and that, that's what I kind of meant by being disjointed yeah. a little bit, you know, so. Um, oh, there's Sylvia. Was there any other thoughts or feedback from anyone regarding the meeting or anything that we would want to uh, follow up with council member Farmer or that for her to follow up with her fellow council members for us? Or we're good. Sorry, I don't usually use this computer and it wanted, it wanted to do a whole update. <laughs> We're talking about um, the council meeting and just getting any feedback from board members regarding how it went or their thoughts or any more information that you might need. Yeah, sorry, I missed it. I was just out of, out of pocket that day. Jason and I have in support of the summer concert series. You know, I think I had any comments about encouraging a little bit more of that and trying to invest in, in programs. Now, but You're breaking up the impacts too. I'm yeah, just, I can't hear him. Uh, Jason, you're having a hard time with your audio. Uh, yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah, you're yeah, breaking up. Uh, I don't know. Let's, uh, I'll see if I can get closer to my, my router here. Um, but um, I feel like, uh, generally, speak, generally speaking, you know, any support we can get them in the COVID recovery, but it's it's been a battle, and and I think uh, you know we're the, the the foundation for the community, and and um, revamp, you know, restarting it. But but I also you know see the difficulty in providing those programs, and so you know it's just it's to Different uncertain time right now. So, the council had a lot of good things to say during council comments last night about the farmers market. That seemed to be a, a huge hit, and everybody was super excited to see how that might, you know, continue to grow. Um, so lots of kudos there. And I believe we're interested in learning more about the summer concert series. Right. Yeah, so, there he is. <laughs> with the new issue that everyone's supposed to be wearing masks, how are they going to do a summer concert series? I, I don't know. We just heard from um, the farmer's market folks that, um, you know, farmers markets are considered essential. So we were able to do that. And so but part of it, you couldn't do any of the fun stuff. You couldn't have any of the entertainment. You can't do anything that creates gathering, blah, blah. Well, they're starting to loosen that up a little bit. So they just sent a note today that said, you can have entertainment. You can have up to two singers, but they have to wear masks. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so I think we're just going to do some canned music for a while and then wait till things, you know, get back. So yeah. we'll Okay. We'll do our best. Any other comments on the joint board meeting? Uh, Jason, just a quick comment. I agree with you. It was a little disjointed. It was hard to have a good conversation. We're just not used to this forum. Yeah. I thought I'd make you all jealous. I'm a hood canal. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Do you have your glass of wine like you had last time? I do. <laughs> oh, oh, not a lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Jason, maybe we move to the next topic. Yep, okay. I think we can roll on to new business and we're going to get a summer update in COVID-19. Um, I know it's been a struggle for us in federal way and I, I'm sure the same for Mary. Yeah. So Nikki's going to share this information with us. So Nikki, you want to get started and I can fill in if there's anything that we need to cover? Sure, we can go ahead and do that. Um, so, yeah, as you know, the COVID-19 recovery has been a little difficult. Um, so this is kind of what our... Nikki, you're muted again. You want to unmute yourself? All right, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so as you know, this recovery has been kind of <laughs> we're learning something new every single day. Um, but with the um, phase recovery in phase one, um, we had only the open spaces, trails, and dog parks um, open. Um, as we moved into phase two, we reopened the boat launch, um, started to open up the restrooms, shelters. Um, small group use is now allowed at the picnic shelters because we're in phase two. Um, and then the senior center and sports field still remain closed at this time. Um, we're hoping to move into phase three, hopefully in July. Um, and at that time, we're looking at youth and adult sports um, with up to 50 people per field. Um, they are required to have a safety plan. Um, and I can touch a little bit more on that in just a moment. Um, we're, we're planning on opening up our day camp um, starting July 6th. Um, we're going to have um, small groups, um, and that's going to be held at the Senior Center this year um, for the first part of it, or is it the whole thing? The whole thing. Okay, so the whole day camp is going to be held at the Senior Center this year. Um, and then as we move into uh, phase three, we're hoping to be able to do groups of up to 50 in the shelters have some modified summer events, including concerts and drive-in movies. And then phase four um, is where we're gonna resume public interactions with physical distancing, resume recreation programming, be able to open up the senior center and be able to have events with more than 50 people. Um, so any questions on any of that? Anybody? Everybody good? Um, so I, I worked on creating a safety plan template. Um, what initially happened is that um, the baseball groups and the, um, the baseball groups and the soccer groups immediately we were, were ready to play again. So what do we need to do to be able to play? Um, they did send me their initial safety plans, um, but I worked on developing um, a, a new safety plan template to kind of give people things to think about. Um, that they may not always think about. Um, so it just has main contact information, when they created their safety plan, when they last updated it. Um, we do want a site map that will be required um, for all of their activities at the parks, including days and hours. Um, they are required to have a COVID-19 safety supervisor. So that's someone that's going to be on site the entire time uh, to make sure that all of the safety guidelines that they've agreed to in their plan are being followed. Um, and then um, just because they have the safety plan, it doesn't guarantee the health and safety of the participants, spectators, and the public that use the facilities. Um, and it doesn't guarantee uh, use of the facilities as well. Um, so things could change. So physical distancing is the one that most people know about. Um, so we just want them to describe how they're going to maintain social distancing, spacing for the participants, coaches, spectators, public, how they're going to limit the number of people. Um, one of the most difficult things that we talked about was the ingress and egress from to and from the site. So how they're going to manage that with different teams coming and going. Um, what kind of physical barriers they're going to use. Um, what kind of signs or visual cues that they're going to have. Um, obviously, they're going to have to have a different practice and game schedule. Um, so we want to know what those schedules are. 
Um, and as you guys were discussing before the meeting started, um, how will you ensure that members, groups, teams are not practicing at the park outside of the organization's request? Um, we've had a lot of groups out on the fields, even though the fields are closed. Um, so we wanna make sure that all the groups that are using the fields are managing it and practicing it safely. So obviously hygiene is another big one. We want them to use frequent hand washing, sanitize their hands, cover coughs and sneezes, um, provide reminders, um, masks. Um, it's hard for the players, so I don't know how that's gonna work with the, the mask mandate, um, but players can't wear masks while they're playing, um, but they do have um, protocols for wearing masks to and from the site, so they will have those masks on when they're they're coming to the practice field. Um, cleaning high touch areas um, doesn't matter so much for soccer, although they were um, pretty clear that they're not going to use the same ball. Um, they're gonna you know, practice in their own little individual spaces. Um, they gave me a map, basically five players per quarter of a field um, for practicing. Um, but we just want to know how they're going to clean those high, high touch areas. Um, baseball, obviously, there's a lot more stuff that can be touched. Um, same thing, um, limiting shared equipment, cleaning the ball in between, um, you know, innings and whatnot. Um, and then what kind of personal protect, protective equipment they are going to need and how they're going to supply it or if people are going to supply it on their own. Um, Obviously, we want to make sure that everybody's healthy that's there at the park. Um, so how are they going to conduct their health screenings? What symptoms are they looking for? What, um, what action are they going to take if somebody doesn't pass that screening? Um, what is their sick policy? Um, when are they going to require people to go home? What are the conditions going to be for them to return to being able to play? And what steps to take if a sick person was around others at a facility or event. Um, and then exposure response, we want them to report it to us right away. Um, obviously, decontaminate the site. Um, and then whatever their um, incident recovery plan is. And then um, how will they provide training? Um, what kind of training are they going to provide regarding this? Um, and then we also have a new um, disclaimer or condition for special events. Um, so that's on this form as well. Nikki, why don't you share with them what that disclaimer, why, what that means, the disclaimer. Um, so our uh, risk management group um, wants to make sure that we are doing everything that we can um, to help protect the public um, and make sure that they're aware of all possibilities and that they can't um, come back and say that, you know, we gave them COVID, <laughs> so. Well, and also is that if we approve a permit for next Thursday and something changes with the world or our county or our city, then we can revoke the permit at any time. If we're looking at them and seeing that they have, you know, they're not following safety protocols that they promised that they would and that they're creating unsafe situations, then we can pull their permit as well. And then that we wouldn't, you know, there's no refunds and we're not going to be caused, you know, have cause for damages, et cetera. Uh, that we just have to be, everybody has to be aware of what's going on at all times and be uh, aware that things can change, you know, daily as they are now. <laughs> so. Um, and then I did have the example of what the soccer group sent over. Um, so they actually have a statewide uh, youth soccer return to play guidelines. Um, they actually did a really good job putting most of that information in there. And I can send this out to you guys later if you guys want to see a copy of this. So Nikki, is this something that we came up with here in the city or did we get help from the governor on this stuff? Um, the one that I came up with, I kind of got some guidance um, from the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. Um, oh, I, it's, it's of, very thorough. Well, I couldn't think of anything else that's, that's been missed. 
Yeah, it, it's kind of a combination between the governor's safe start um, reopening plan and the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department reopening plan. Um, but like this one, um, the soccer group came up with on their own, um, the one that you're seeing on the screen now. Um, so the soccer group came up with that. Um, and it's pretty good. Um, they actually attached maps so you can see what they have planned out. Hmm. Yeah, we've had such great um, partnership with the uh, be Lakewood Soccer Club. Now it's the Lakewood Silicon DuPont Soccer Club. They are really responsive. They're, they talk to all their coaches and parents. They communicate on a regular basis. They're out there um, during when they're when the facilities are being used, they are really good tenants, so to speak. Um, and it's really great to work with them. They take full responsibility for situations that occur. They, you know, buy their own nets. They're really a good partner in our community. They serve about 600 kids to 800 kids a season. Um, and they, they, you know, they are the people that we hold all the other groups up to because they really are good to work with. And, um, are, you know, they recognize it's, a privilege to be able to have these wonderful facilities and they take that very seriously so um we know it can be done you know when some groups are fussing about this and that we know it can be done because we have groups that do it so and then um the one that's on the screen now is um the return to play guidelines for one of our big tournament groups that comes and plays baseball um so they don't have visuals on theirs, but they did have a pretty thorough information on um, how they plan to um, manage those groups and social distance and not share equipment and all of that kind of stuff. Thank you, Nikki. Um, Thank are there you, it's been again every like today we just got a note that said something about mandating masks i haven't even looked at it yet but i did get an email from um some of our park and rec folks uh you know there's constant new information happening um the governor um is trying to be and his team are trying to be as responsive as possible because there's a lot of people chewing on them for guidance and specificity on different topics and so they are taking a, you know, like eating an elephant, a bite at a time. And so we do get bits and pieces. Some of the um, guidance is very specific. Some of it's somewhat vague, but says check with your local um, health departments or department, your local health departments, which we do. We have good contacts there. Um, some of them are, have um, guidelines that everybody needs to follow. Some of them say, you know, do what's best for your community. So we're doing our best to keep up with what's required. We're doing our best to implement what we think are socially responsible um, tasks or elements to the things that we do um, and not step too far over the line, um, but also knowing that, you know, like at first they said that playgrounds were like, uh, were like a health club equipment or health club equipment, yeah. So it wasn't available, you couldn't access it, you're supposed to clean it every 13 seconds, and it, which isn't realistic. And then trying to keep people off them was even harder. You know, we taped and fenced and taped and fenced and signed. And um, after three weeks of everything being ripped down regularly, I said, you know, keep the signs up because that's important, we need to notify it, but don't spend the resources or the time doing that. And other groups have, you know, gone into the extreme of renting fence and things, but. You know, we've really emphasized throughout all of this that people need to take personal responsibility. They need to, you know, not count on us to do everything. They need to carry their own wipes and have their own hand sanitizer. And if there's too many kids on a playground or in an area, move to another spot or maybe come back later. If you are the ones in the area, you know, don't spend all day there. Give somebody else a chance to come and play too. So, you know, we've tried to give people helpful hints on how to be good citizens and to be responsible and to be safe. And for the most part, um, some folks are, but boy, the sun came out and we hit phase two and people are like, oh, it's all back to normal, right? You know, the beaches are really full and, um, you know, it's, some people are taking it very seriously and some people aren't. So 
So um, that's all I can say about that. And there's only so much we can do. You know, we can't control everything. Um, we don't have the resources or the time. And honestly, you know, working with the general public, some people will say thank you for your good efforts and other people will tell you what you can do with your good efforts. So we do the best we can with the resources that we have. And um, so. Great. Um, how, did, how, how frequently are you guys cleaning restrooms and how did you kind of come and determine your sanitation standard? Um, we're cleaning restrooms twice a day. Um, we clean them at night so they're ready for the next morning when the park opens. So they're, they're cleaned in the evening. And then we have a, a midday clean. Um, so we looked at, try, again, doing the best we could with the resources that we had. When we talked about whether we we're going to open the uh, playgrounds back up, there were all kinds, you know, I mean, you can sanitize every bit of a playground and the first kid, snotty nose kid that goes down the slide, <laughs> you've lost it, right? So, um, and for us to get backpack blowers and, you know, all of that stuff. So um, we just try and do the best we can with the resources that we have. And again, um, but for the restrooms, we're doing them twice a day. And that's our real restrooms. We're not cleaning Santa cans. Yeah, perfect. Other questions? Yeah, just a quick comment on the restroom thing. Um, Mary, is that sign your Santa cans are not cleaned or, or what's the frequency of that cleaning? Um, I'm not sure we have anything on the Santa cans except for we might have that you bring your own sanitizer thing. Um, okay. But, um, I don't think that they're cleaned once a week, I think, from the, the Santa can people. Yeah. Um, they, uh, no, I think when summer hits, we service them twice a day. I'm not sure if that's picked up yet because we just got things going. But um, mm. yeah, so that might be something worth doing. Um, any other board member comments? Hearing none, I think we can roll on to the director's report. Okay, well, um, as Nikki said, every day is a new adventure here in the city of Lakewood. Um, we are, um, we have been working with uh, the Parks and Rec professionals. We've been chatting twice a week for since COVID started. You know, a group of us started, there's a group of Pierce County folks that we get together every three or four months. There's a group of King County folks that get together every one and two months. So we started merging our meetings by Zoom. And next thing you know, we probably have between 85 and 100 people every Monday and Thursday. So this week, we just started meeting back to once a week. Every Monday and Thursday. And we have plenty to talk about for an hour. We go um, and uh, it's facilitated. The topics change. We have an agenda. And it's all been, you know, who's doing what, where, how are you doing it? What's your level of service? Um, you know, what phase are you in? Because um, it's people mostly from all over the state now. We, in, in fact, Oregon and uh, a couple of folks from Oregon and California that sneak in too. So that's been great. It's been great resources to give us feedback, to give us direction, to give us guidance, to give us help. Uh, and also knowing everybody's doing their own thing, right? Everybody's doing things a little bit differently. So, um, but it's been a really great conversation. Um, so that's helped us a lot. Um, and kept us all on track. And I facilitate the Pierce County group. And uh, there's a gentleman in North, up by North Bend that does the King County group. And we allow Thurston County to sneak into because um, there's anybody up there helping them. But so anyway, it's been, it's been good. Um, so that's been a good education on a regular basis of professionals working together. Jason um, comes in and listens in too on most days. So that's wonderful. Um, so that's happening there. Um, Regarding capital projects, I'll just kind of give you a quick overview on what we're doing now. Um, you know, we received that money from the state on Springbrook Park. It took them about eight months to get us our contract. So we're going to be looking on park expansion and we're going to be looking at creek restoration. So we're going to be, I think, working with um, Bruce Dees on that, actually, because he's done all of the park design and expanding for that next expansion. Um, the gateways, we are looking at putting gateways in up at Berkeley. Um, off the new JBLM and then over by Woodbrook, which will be, we'll have it be the industrial park. Uh, the new roundabouts that are going in, we'll have gateways there. So that'll be happening later this summer. 
We have all those designs. It'll look very much like our current gateway signs, but the, it'll be a little different. I think we're gonna do a back to back so you can see it, you know, when you're spinning around the gate the traffic circle. Um, Harry Todd Park, we've given the notice to proceed to the contractor for that waterfront project. You know, that's been a long time coming. And the notice to proceed is so that they can start getting like the docks and the um, fishing pier uh, fabricated. Uh, they won't be starting work until September, right after the summer's over. And then our goal is they'll be done before um, summer starts next year. So that's very exciting. The Chambers Creek Canyon Trail Program, um, we've, we're still in design and permitting. Uh, that project has turned out to be a little more challenging than we thought. We know the first bridge off of Phillips we can do and that'll be easy. Um, the second bridge is causing a little bit more uh, challenge as well with all the new flood zones and you know habitat stuff. And then um, also the boardwalks and things that are on the UP side are also becoming a little bit more challenging to actually be able to construct. So um, every time we talk to the contractor, you know, the cost estimates getting higher and higher. So we're really gonna have to take a good look at that project and see. Um, the good news is, is that, um, you know, the Lakewood side is gonna be easy to do and connect. So, so I think that part's great, but the, the, all of the connections that were initially anticipated just it's becoming a little bit of a challenge, but we'll keep you in the loop once we know more about that. Um, uh, when's that first bridge going to be in? I beg your pardon? Sylvia, could you repeat your question? She's frozen. Hmm. Okay, all of a sudden everything locked up here. Yeah, can you tell me that question again? I'm sorry. Did it have something to do with the first bridge? I think she was asking when is the first bridge going to be completed? I may be mistaken, yeah. but that's no, kind of what I heard. Yeah, I think it was something about the first bridge. So the idea is, is that we were going to be doing it all together. We have one, we had phase one, which was the first bridge and phase two, which was the second bridge and the other pathways. And what we've done is put the projects together so we could get efficiencies in de design and permitting and all of that. But I do think what we might do is go back to just doing phase one and getting that accomplished within the grant period and then figuring out how the second part might happen. Because we have the grant, we have the resources to do the first bridge. So um, probably won't happen, Sylvia, until early next year because it's still we still have to finish the permitting um, once we get the final design and all of that. Um, let's see. So Edgewater Park, um, we have been working on that for quite some time. Um, the Public Works Department wanted us to do the survey. It took forever. I guess it was a very difficult plat and they had to do a bunch of history and there were some weird little things. But um, so we finally just got that back. And then once we all kind of can get in the same room, Public Works needs to help us decide with the one way road, which is the best one way this way or that way um, to relieve that uh, traffic flow and to provide some parking down there so we can take some of the safety issues away. So that's still pending and will be coming your way soon. Um, Seeley Lake, we're working on the Seeley Lake project. There'll be a survey going out to all the residents that live around there and there's apartment complexes and some business owners um, to get some feedback on that site. Um, and so that is um, either gonna happen right before the 4th of July or right after the 4th of July. And so we're, our goal is to move forward with that have some plans in the fall for what we want to do with the idea of getting something accomplished by the end of the year with the resources that we have. Um, so that's exciting that that's moving forward. Um, the Angle Lane South, they have our pre-construction meeting tomorrow and we're we'll getting started on that project. Um, that's to do the parking lot down at Edge, um, not Edgewater, the, the um, Elwood. Elwood, Elwood, thank you. Yeah, the parking lot down there, all the way up to the dog park where the um, kind of all the roads meet and the restroom there. And so that'll be starting probably in the next several weeks. So that's very exciting. And uh, that will be done by the end of the summer. And then the pavilion, we are having a heck of a time getting bids to put in simple two little restrooms and a kitchen. It's either ridiculous or nobody has, nobody wants to do the work because they've got lots of other work, but we're, we're, 
being creative and finding the right person to do that. We've got the permits now finally and all the plans done. So if you know a good contractor that can put in some things, pass them our way because we don't have to do a big bid process because it's less than you know three hundred fifty thousand dollars. But we just need to get three bids to be able to move forward with that. So. So those projects are moving forward. Wards Lake um, master plan. Um, well, I should just move right into. So it's grant season, RCO grant season. So we've got six, no, seven grants that we're applying for. And I think it's gonna kill me, um, but we have, um, so my job is to find as much money as I can so we don't have to spend general fund money. So right now we have- Good job, Mary. <laughs> Yay! So we have, um, we're in the run for a legacy, a land and water conservation fund legacy project. And that's a $960,000 grant. And that is, they um, pick two to four projects in the state and we made the final um, four and then they send it nationally. So we just finished our technical review and that's a national selection process. And so we're in the mix for that. We also are applying for a regular land and water conservation fund grant. We can't take both. One is like a 700 and some thousand, one's a 900 and some thousand. So I'll take either, but we can't take both, but we did apply for both so that we could be eligible for them. So we'll get one or the other, fingers crossed. We're also applying for Wards Lake Park for a YAF, that's Youth Athletic Fund, because one of the little elements was a pump track, which is eligible for the Youth Athletic Fund. So that's a $350,000 grant. So, and they can all match each other because one's state, one's fed, one's local. So. Um, so we're looking for that. So that's um, a YAF. And then we're applying for American Lake Park to do the master plan there uh, to make it ADA accessible and fix up some of those retaining walls and to put in a new shelter and make it all accessible and nice. That's a 50 some year old park that needs some love. We're doing an uh, uh, aquatic land enhancement fund account and a local park. So we're doing that. And then we also are applying for um, uh, with the YAF for the ball field, the turf at Fort Silicon, we got our cost estimates and they were kind of high. So I figured, well, I'll go find 350,000 more to help us get that project done. So we're applying for all of those. Um, I did two presentations on Monday. I have another presentation on Friday and another one on Monday, which is technical review, which is awesome because they tell you all the ways that you can make your project even better from a presentation. But the presentations I thought went really, really well, really good feedback. They're all very competitive, so fingers crossed. But that's all just on top of everything else that we're working on. So, um, but it's good for the city, and we've been pretty successful with our grants. So we're hoping that that will be, we will be successful there as well. Um, as uh, oh yes, Mike. Uh, I had a question about uh, the pavilion. I have a my neighbor's a, a construction guy. Uh, yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> what is it that? needs to be done. It's a tenant improvement, technically. We have, um, it's adding two bathrooms and a warming kitchen. And okay. so if he's a real contractor with real, you know, licensed, bonded, and, you know, has truck, um, if you want to send me his name and address and he wants to bid for it, we'd, we'd be happy. Okay. To well, let me, let me talk to him and see if that's something he might be interested yeah. in. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so we're doing our part to find those those folks. So we are going to talk tomorrow with the people that are building the restroom at Fort Silicon. We figure, heck, they're in the long property with an extra load of materials. Maybe we can get them to build that bathroom, do that bathroom too. So anyway, so we're being creative with the resources out there. So we'll figure it out. Um, Farmer's Market started as Linda Farmer. Farmer's Market started last Friday. Um, and I, I can't remember the last time we talked about these things, but so we had the farmer's market on Tuesday at City Hall, super successful, thousands of people came, amazing. We were gonna do the night market at the at Motor Ave at the Colonial Plaza this year. Excited, you know, it's gonna be a great night market. We've gone to some other night markets that people thought were great and we're like, ours is gonna be spectacular. So then um, COVID, ah, now we're not gonna do it. Well, the city opened, so we really couldn't use that because it would have been a challenge. There's no, you know, for restrooms and access and all of that. And also to get people in and out one way was a challenge based on at the time, the health department had really specific strict criteria. So we decided to shuffle them all together and come up with farmer's market at Fort Stilicum. The ball field parking lot is great. We can get one way in, one way out. We have a restroom with real restroom water. Plus we had sanitation stations. 
So we did the first one last Friday, we did it with a drive-through option, which was one of the kind of early requirements of the health department for not touching anything. And the farmers have all these restrictions. They can't, you know, don't touch the tomatoes, we'll bag them for you. Um, it, it's starting to loosen up a little bit. Like you couldn't have any crafters, you could only have farmers. At first you couldn't even have flowers. I'm like, we're bringing the flowers in anyway. They grow, I can sell them. So, um, but anyway, so it's uh, this week we're gonna completely take out the drive-through option. Some people used it, but it was too, took too much parking up and it was kind of scary with cars and people. So um, we're gonna scrap that and have it be a completely new layout. Uh, we're gonna add some fun elements and it's gonna be great. So come on Friday from three to seven and we'd love to have you come to the market. Um, summer concerts, Knockwood will be starting in the middle of July and we've got six concerts planned. Um, we will figure out how to let people sing. Maybe we'll put a little hole in their mask, um, but we'll figure it out. We're problem solvers. Um, we will have more staff out there coordinating access in accommodating social distancing. We believe that we've got the space to do it. If it ends up being like crazy, um, then we may go to where we might grid off areas so that people know exactly where to come and where to go. But we believe people will make good choices and we'll help them do that. Oh, back to the farmer's market. So we've been working on this since February, right? We've been, we meet um, Sally and her team. There's farmer's market groups and they talk and they meet. We've gone to different markets to see how they work. Um, so they all had really slow starts, right? And so we figured we'd have kind of a slow start. We'd get it all figured out. We had people showing up at three. It was booked the whole time, 30 minute lines for food. Um, the problem, people really weren't social distancing very well. So we're gonna work on that. But, um, but we had an 11% increase in sales for those farmers from last year. And last year was another year of huge growth. We had 10 less vendors last year, or 10 less vendors this year than we had at our opening last year. So people were there, they were buying, the vendors are happy, the people were happy, everybody's happy. So we're adding, I think 10 or, we're adding a bunch of new vendors this year because we're able to now. We can have crafters, we can have more food trucks. So it's gonna be fun. And we're gonna try drive-in movies. So we're gonna do two drive-in movies and uh, we're gonna try that out this year. And so um, we've got layout, we've got a company that we use normally for our walk-in movies. Uh, they can do it through your car, just like the old days. Gal coordinating this has never been to a drive-in movie. So who hasn't been to a drive-in movie? Raise your hand if you have, if you have been to a drive-in movie. There you go. Back, Sylvia, you're out there in Belfair. We usually go to the rodeo drive-in once a year out in Belfair, just uh, mm -hmm. on the, um, across from the airport. But uh, anyway, so we're going to try it, and um, it's going to be great. So we've got the area set up, and uh, we'll have people directing traffic, and you can put it on your FM radio. Or, I don't know, somehow through the car. <laughs> so that'll be, toward, we're doing that towards the end of August. We really need to just kind of get our ducks in a row and figure out how that's going to work and um We'll see how it works. We're having to tell people no. Uh, people are calling. They're wanting to do big events. They're wanting to do all kinds of things. And we're having to be really um, restrictive because we are, uh, we have to be following the guidelines that we expect everybody to do and, and the orders that we've been given. So we're, again, doing the best we can with all of the resources that we have. And then crazy adventure. And that's my report right now. Awesome. Yeah, I, I missed a good portion of it, Mary. Apology, technology difficulties, but uh, um, we'll go to any board member comments. Hi. I just want to share that we have the uh, North. Oh, no, oh. Alan is. Okay, sorry, I'm open. Yep, yep. Okay, we have the Northwest Youth Corps out at the uh, wildlife area starting Monday, this last Monday, and they're bringing out. 10 kids that show up at nine o'clock in the morning. They're pulling scotch broom and uh, doing work. They're gonna paint the fence. It's a great group. We got them for an extra week because we got a, a grant from the Dawkins Charitable Fund. So we have them for two weeks out there. So in the next couple of weeks, uh, if you get a second, drive by, see what's going on. They're doing a lot of work. It's gonna look gorgeous out there. That's amazing, Alan. Good job. That's great. Yeah, awesome. Sylvia's got her. Sylvia, you need to unmute yourself. Unmute. Right. There you go. I want to say it's really cool that we have these kind of meetings in the summer.
because then wherever we are, we can participate. We might want to do that in the summers, even when we're back to regular kind of meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep that in mind. Yeah. I just have to get better at leading with Sylvia. Okay. Sorry, Any other board member comments? The only comment was, I said, I just uh, have to get how's, better veteran, how's veterans drive coming along and then the impact to American Lake? Um, the question was about vet veterans driving the impact to American Lake. Correct. So they are going, um, I, you know, people will have figured out how to get there. So oh. the parks were full in the summer, um, boat launches have to hop in. So that's not a problem when they're all done. You know, they're going to be actually replacing the playground or replacing the parking lot. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do that till September. So um, they're going to try and impact that till after the summer season. Okay. People are figuring it out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One more call for board member comments. All right, hearing none, we'll meet again in July, uh, July 28th, 530. Uh, don't know if it'll be Zoom or in person yet, right, Mary? Uh, we, I don't know. Michael, Michael's got a question. Oh, sorry. I will be in Maine fishing on the lake. Huh, nice. Eating a devil dog, drinking a moxie. That's You'll right. be on Zoom in That's Maine. Right. Uh, you know, they have Zoom in Maine. Hey, come on, you're not getting out of this. <laughs> not, out of the, not, out, not at the lake house, they don't. <laughs> All right. We don't, have, we don't have anything out there. Oh, yeah. okay. We'll give you a pass. Hey, Mary. Yeah. Catch uh, them on. I don't know if this is, is at all possible. But if any of you have ever been to a, a church that has, um, uh, sometimes their band will have a plexiglass enclosure for their drums. And so yeah, I don't know if you've thought about maybe enclosing your singers in giant plexiglass and you oh. might to get them loaned for, from some area churches because of the you know the droplets coming out if they were yeah. I don't know yeah that's I a good idea that. yeah you know that, that's a great idea I'll talk about to Sally Sally is amazingly resourceful and so Sally is awesome yeah yeah so that's a great idea you know that could be maybe something that would be protective you wouldn't have to wear your mask yeah that's a great idea as long as they're, you know, familyed up and because uh, they would right. definitely be exposing themselves within the enclosure, but right. I don't know. Well, there's like see in between them, like bubble people. <laughs> that, that's a great idea, though. It could be a possibility. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, be safe. So. Be well. Bye guys. Happy Fourth of July. Thank you all. Keep it up. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe. Yeah. Stay safe.